Hey everybody, welcome back to LinksCast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. All right, we, re- we remember that we did it that way now. It's good. Uh, it's going to be a, it's, uh, a year from now, we'll remember that we do it that way. It's, it still seems very new this time. Anyway, so this is the LinksCast. We talk about Linuxy things most of the time. Uh, we do, believe it or not, have show notes every week for this show. And we follow them. We do follow them, but it's mm-hmm. just... Uh, uh, we like taking our the long circuitous route through the show notes, uh, so mm. expect this to be uh, that just like always because we have no self dif- discipline, none, so- none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will and say the scenic route is the way to go ninety percent of the time. Okay, yes. um, right. yeah, that's so true. <laughs> if you do enjoy this scenic route, um. I will say this before we get into what we've done this week in Linux. Tech Over T, my episode that I was on with Brody Robertson, is up. So good. And it's like two hours and 20 minutes of pure awesomeness. Uh, I'm surprised that he found so much to cut out, on, honestly, because it was definitely <laughs> closer to three hours. Um, but he probably cut out all the, like, the just us <laughs> laughing our asses off. <laughs> it was good. Anyways, that is up on both YouTube and uh, Odyssey. It's also in audio form. Uh, on his uh, 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 anchor.fm page. So definitely check that out. It was really good. Um, so anyways, so Tyler, what mm-hmm. have you been doing on Linux this week? Um, well, um, no, I am technically answering a question here because I did see it in chat, but <laughs> I've been working on uh, elementary OS. Uh, I'm... I'm on elementary OS six and I've just been m- like messing around with it. Uh, like n- not changing too much, but um, really making it like a lot more make sense with a keyboard setup. Cause out of the gate, it's just really not like all of the tools that you need to make it a more keyboard driven setup are there, but like none of them are being utilized. And, um, So I've been going through there doing that. And then, um, I don't know, like really just getting used to, uh, using a floating window manager, which is not like, yeah, technically there's some form of tiling in every floating window manager, but it's not real tiling. Like I don't care what type of BS route you go to like emulate tiling. If it's not tiling, it's not freaking tiling. So whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it's good. It's good. Uh, and then uh, besides working on elementary OS, just been planning, um, uh, like planning out my different options for going off grid. Uh, cause my grandparents really want me to come up there and do something on their property instead of moving out of state. And I, I don't know. I, I'm just not sure which way I want to go yet. So just planning out my different options. Uh, so I mean, been just a well, you an do, average sort of week. You do it at your grandparents' place. You'll be closer to the internet. That is, that also, is definitely also, no sand. Uh. <laughs> true, true, <laughs> and no a uh, hundred and like five degree weather, which is awesome. At least not you know uh. normal hundred and five degree weather. Like it does happen. Uh. It just doesn't happen in December. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like here, if it's a hundred degrees one day, and that is like a fluke of nature and the next day it's like 70 something degrees like it's normally not that bad like tennessee has like insane weather like one day it'll be like 100 degrees next day like there's freaking snow coming down like like we're we have just the most bipolar weather you think it's bad you should live in michigan because literally it it was 90 degrees last week today it's 30 (laughs) <laughs> like, 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 you know, and tomorrow or like the next three days it's supposed to be in the 70s so uh yeah it's really crazy weather like all mm-hmm. over the place i think so definitely um all right so uh me now this it really doesn't have anything to do with linux but so my old microphone boom arm gave up the ghost and it just would not hold up this high pr40 it was just mm, you know it was just droopy what he's what he's saying is his mic's too big and his other mic arm just couldn't handle it right you know he's a real baller (laughs) they say say size doesn't matter but it's not true (laughs) anyways um 
uh anyway so i had, I got a new boom arm and it was not expensive it was like 40 bucks but it's meant for like it's heavy duty like it's, it's a man's but <laughs> <laughs> it's a man's man's boom arm. It, it, it's meant for a big mic anyways <laughs> the the problem with is is the clamp would not fit where the old clamp was so i had to shift it up to the upper shelf which is up on the sh- the uh hutch that's behind my monitors because i have this gigantic oak desk like i was talking about last week and uh i also had to shift it over because there's a whole bunch of stuff on the other side of this so uh, that means i now have this microphone uh right in the middle of my face <laughs> and <laughs> i can't see my uh monitor all that well i've gotten a little used to it in the time that uh, you know i've tried and I'm also going to have to, you know, like make sure that I'm not breathing right into the mic because all you just hear me like I'm like a uh, horrible. So, <laughs> well, the, the thing, though, is, it's like I don't know that I could get used to just having a bar like right here in my face. Like, that's that's got to be annoying. Like, it has to be annoying. Well, I mean, it's not I've gotten a little used to it. It's like having uh well, I mean, you like wear glasses, right? I mean, you got your glasses yeah. on your face. You've gotten used to them, but when you first yeah. probably, when you probably when you first put them on, it felt that's <laughs> this is going to be the hardest part is not hitting the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Because uh, I, I I talk with my hands like this. I'm going. Nobody can see me because I'm not on even on the freaking pot the split. So so I totally try to switch, switch the scenes. That's okay. But anyways, now they can see me. Like is this this thing and i hit the damn thing all the time and it just swings swings back and forth like this the poor audio people are like we no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway but anyways the, it's like i think it's like your glasses like you'll get used to it a little bit like yeah, well i mean the thing about glasses though is they're like in your peripheral vision like yeah. they cover up your peripheral like i mean that's like that's like dead center over your like left eye <laughs> right well it's right in the center of my nose if I look straight on, so I can I can at least see stuff, and it's not gonna be like a, a huge deal because I don't do, I mean, it'll be I don't know. It's gonna take some. You're use not to. having so the, the the real quest or the real question is is do you watch like movies and have cinematic experiences on your computer? Not why I need because I can when I'm actually need to use it I can just like this and push it back a little bit. And I can see fine. Mm-hmm. It's not in my face anymore. It's oh, just, the, uh, that my like at, vision. Yeah. Okay, so on so at that level there, it's not covering up any of the screen. No, it's just it's just at the level of the top of the screen, and it can, I can actually push this back forward a little bit more, and it's not. Mm-hmm. I I mean I can see it obviously, but I mean nobody can actually hear me now. But you know it's uh actually your audio wasn't that bad uh, uh, over there i can still hear you it wasn't as good as when it's right up in your face yeah. but uh, yeah. like i said it's gonna get some it's gonna take some getting used to because if i have to i can move all the stuff that's on that side of the hutch that's closest to the wall and shove it all sideways and then move the clamp to the corner and then it would be up here against the wall like it was before and then just when i need to record i'd pull it down and it would be here like where it was, just a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. Um, that's possible. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Because I don't think, because normally the microphone was pointed at my mouth like this, right? That's where it was mm-hmm. before. And I think my audio was fine, as fine as this shitty mic can actually get. Uh, and I don't think it's much much better here. Mm-hmm. Not really. Uh, there's more of a chance now of plosive, so please bring pizza pronto. Uh, but that's why I have to have the you know the windscreen on here. But also because, I you know I'm a mouth breather, so <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's definitely people wish I used a pop filter again. I stopped using it, and people are like, I I, I know there's someone out there who's like, Jesus man, can't you please go back? Like uh, it's so much better. Yours isn't nearly as bad, so. Uh, like I love, I love Hex DSL. All of his stuff is great, but that man needs a pop filter like crazy. Since mm-hmm. he took, since he got that new mic and went without a pop filter, all of his, all he has just has so many plosives. It's just insane. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. 
All right. So anyways, that's what I've been doing the you know today at least is you know finagling this and the, you're right this is not going to work cuz I'm I'm going to hit this thing like crazy. <laughs> it's just it's <laughs> going to be batting it around like a fucking uh you know a ball or something and <laughs> so dumb playing pong with your microphone. <laughs> yeah, it's just I mean cuz I'm going to be hitting it like crazy. I mean, like I'm, those poor audio people like will you stop hitting your mic. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Uh yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, they can't complain too much. At least you got it on a shock mount. I mean, if you were just straight up slapping that microphone, oh, it'd be so much worse. Hey, I could just be tapping the top of it. All right. Anyways, yeah. All right. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the contact information. If I can, you know, see it. <laughs> uh, if you want to get in contact with us you can do so you can follow us on twitter at the linux cast you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the linuxcast.org if you'd like to get in contact with us via email you can do so at email at the linuxcast.org you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast uh, tyler is patreon.com slash official zany Something like that. Um. Uh. No. Uh, on Patreon, it's slash AK Zany. A A K A Zany. Good lord. A K A Zany. Okay. So if, if yeah. you'd rather support Zany, I don't, I, support somebody. If you, if you have the have a couple right. pennies to rub together, yeah. uh, you can also follow him on uh, YouTube and Patreon. Those links are in the video description. We'll eventually get him to a thousand likes so we can he can do. Uh, YouTube.com slash official Zany. We're, we're not likes, but subscribers. We're, we're he's he's this close. You know, just this close. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't subscribed to him, go subscribe because his stuff is awesome. Literally, he he released a video today. It was just 20 minutes of him reading messages on Discord. It was yep. pure gold. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so it was, it was very good. So definitely go check uh, his channels out. And you can subscribe to this channel at YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. That right there, my friend, was the best contact information section we've ever had. And I'm just going to mm -hmm. record that and stick that shit right in the middle of every episode. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> that was great. There you go. It's <laughs> definitely what I need to do. So, all right. Uh, every week, we do things where we go through and search for news uh, of Linux, the Linux variety. And uh, we each come up with a link. Now, I I'm, have not planned this out and, or told Tyler that I'm going to do this. But before we go be, go into the links that we chose, we should talk about that epic thing that just came out like, right before oh, the yes. show. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows this, and I don't have the link up to actually show you, but it's true. Uh, epic Games has released a Linux version of their anti-cheat software. So that means any game that Epic has should in theory now work on Linux. And that includes Fortnite and um well it totally went blank on the, the racing game. What we were just talking about it. Oh um God, we're not so, we're dang, dang it. Anytime someone says racing game my brain goes dirt. It's not dirt. Um <laughs> good lord. You're playing soccer oh. with fucking uh uh Rocket League. Rocket League, go. that was it. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> Between the two of us, we have Alzheimer's. <laughs> I mean, it's just completely gone. But anyways, uh, yeah, they just announced that that their, their easy anti-cheat is going to work on Linux and Mac. And on the Steam Deck. So, that's Epic Games taken care of. Now, I don't really care about Epic Games. What makes me so excited about this is if... If they manage to get this, if in coordination with Steam, because they work with Proton in order to do it, this is going to be through Proton and Wine. Uh, if they've gotten this one, they're going to get the other two big ones. And that mm -hmm. means that more and more games are going to be on Steam Deck when this thing launches. And I'm going to, oh man, it's going to be good. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm excited because if they get anti cheat workings, like, even though I don't really like play a lot of Call of Duty games, that means I can load into my COD library and just play Nazi Zombies online like it was just any other PC. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, the fact that I can just play Apex, like, anytime I decided, just to install it, remove it, you know, just whenever I feel like it, future, play a little bit of Apex. The future but, is bright, man, on Linux. Mm -hmm. I mean, who the hell? I mean, and we, like, this is going to be good. <laughs> like, like uh, my only worry is that we're going to have all these, like, like the first batch of those Steam Decks are going to come out to people who have never used Linux before. And mm -hmm. the, the distribution that we've chosen to give them is Arch Linux. <laughs> like, I... 
I think that's the real problem that, uh, like, and see, here's the thing. We all, all of us who have used Arch for a long time know this. Arch is not that unstable. You might have the occasional problem, but normally the problem with Arch is not its stability, but it's the fact that packages can get updated rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And some developers, even the best of them, make mistakes. And so even something like GIMP, that rarely gets major updates that break anything. It happens once or twice where you'll have a bug and it takes a couple days or a week to get fixed. And I feel like people who get the system start tinkering around with it will be like, why is this piece of software not working? Yeah. And that comment a week later is not valid anymore, but that comment will stay up. Well, yeah, so, you, you almost, they're almost have to going to have to treat that Arch install like Manjaro treats theirs. It's going to have to be a delayed thing. They're not going to be able to use the core Arch repos because it's just not going to work because... Uh, just the other day, I had a, a an update that came through. It, it required a dependency of a certain version, and that version was old, and you couldn't update. It just would not update. I had to remove that old dependency with force and then reinstall it, it you know, the new version, so that the version numbers matched up. And mm -hmm. you can't ask normal Joe Schmo who wants to play, you know, Grand Theft Auto to do that. You just can't. So no. they're going to have to delay that, but... Well, that's going to be, in in all fairness to SteamOS, that's going to be an issue with actual like desktop side like applications. When it comes to SteamOS and everything, I mean, you're not really going to have that issue. Well, cause that and they make... control everything, every dependency that they need for Steam and stuff like that, they control. <laughs> so it's going to be the underlying parts of Arch Linux that are going to be the, the problem, the thing that nobody ever interacts with. You know, the kernel and things like that that are going to cause problems every once in a while. Uh, but we'll see. No. Uh, I'm assuming and they're going to be and, testing this shit, so. Yeah. And, I mean, again, it's just like any other Linux distro. It's based off of Arch Linux. That doesn't mean it's Arch itself. So, um, which I think a lot of people are confusing about it. Like, even SteamOS, when it orig originally came out, it was Debian-based, but it was not Debian. Yeah. Like... It's de oh. it's definitely going to have to be based. All right. So that was just a, like a random news. So you're actually getting three news this week. So Tyler, why don't you tell mm -hmm. us what your link was? Mine is a 9 to 5 Linux article on NVIDIA's new driver that came out. It's uh, 470.74 uh, for all of you out there who, uh, who have NVIDIA cards and uh, don't update. So... Here's the thing, this this new update to the driver um, is, I mean, it's cool and all. It brings support for Linux, uh, the not newest Linux kernel, but the very new version of it, .14, uh, which is good, good. Um, but the thing about it that just cracks me up is the highlights of this, this update is that it brings improvements for Firefox. And... Look, we all we all know how bloated browsers are and everything, but can you honestly tell me that 15 years ago you ever imagined that you would live in a world where a a driver update for a graphics card what like a major point of it was going to be that your browser ha had like ma it had major improvements so that your browser was better and could perform better? Well, I mean we would have been very happy 15 years ago if that had been the case because browsing back then, I mean, it wasn't slow, but it was all CPU based, right? It was, mm -hmm. it was no, there's no GPU rendering, rendering at all. So, but granted back then we didn't have like uh, nine gigabytes of JavaScript on every single website having to display you an advertisement or, you know, whatever. So <laughs> I, I think it probably more speaks to the sad fact that the web is so bloated. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the the fact that so like he, here's something that uh, the the article states. So it improves support for Firefox web browser to prevent visual corruption by adding an application profile to disable FXAA, um, also available for FreeBSD and Solaris systems. It fixes a Vulkan performance regression that affected blah blah a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so it. It's just weird to me that we're we're now at a point where like FXAA and stuff is 
like affecting your browser and you, you like you you can either use it or not like it's it's just weird that the same technologies that are powering very very graphically advanced games are also being utilized in browsers where i mean like come on like most people just use them for news websites like or facebook like what i don't need an rtx like 3050 ti to have a good experience i shouldn't i should just need a decent cpu gotta, <laughs> like you know, the, that's it. the the thing is is that sometimes like sites like facebook and whatever because you're using like web apps too it's like discord you can use discord in your web you know uh, things like that take up just as much like cpu and gpu as like a low-end like tux racing game probably is probably the same <laughs> yeah. now it's not consistent like a, a race like a game like a, a game will use this performance all the time websites usually are only going to take it you know when it's loading or you know at least the processing power the re memory stays there like all the time like right now i'm using a quarter <laughs> i'm using 25 percent of my 64 gigabytes of ram right now <laughs> Jesus. Well, cause I, let's see what I have open right now. I have two instances of Firefox with like six or seven tabs open. I have two instances of Cube Browser. I have Audacity. I have Discord. I have OBS. I I have uh, Thunar and Todoist and several terminals open. Uh, by the way, I have these all in many different workspaces. <laughs> so, in case you were wondering. So, yeah, definitely. Of course. Of course. Memory is still a problem. <laughs> that People ask me, why I have, man, why do you have 24, 64 gigabytes of RAM? That's why. <laughs> that is nuts, man. All right. Uh, yeah, so the thing is, I'm so glad I don't use NVIDIA anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I always have to rely on these uh, d these driver updates for stuff, and things get broken when you get new ones. And, uh, yeah, so being on the AMD side of things, yes, stuff, you still get updates and stuff, but it's not ever that big of a deal because it's just, you know, it's an update that it, comes through every once in a while. It's normally fixing, like, problems that you've had on newer cards and the older cards really just get security updates because they just work like and then over time like yeah performance will get better on them as well they'll get performance enhancements but yeah i mean not to an insane degree i feel like some people buy like eight-year-old graphics cards because they're like this thing has like even though yeah it's super old like it's on linux so it's been getting performance improvements so, like yeah but like they're not going to be able to like get an extra 30 frames out of an old graphics card just in a driver like, update yeah, like you come can't on add now. more memory to it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> my question is why not wouldn't it be cool to be able to go out and buy like a, like a, a so dim of memory and just plop it onto your graphics card like all of a sudden now i went from an 8 gigabyte card to a 16 gigabyte card that'd be so, well, so cool Technically speaking, with a lot of AMD cards, if you know what you're doing and you know what to buy, you could theoretically desolder off the memory and resolder it on there. But that requires a level of knowledge because you not only have to replace them, I'm pretty sure you have to change like something in firmware, like you have to update firmware for it to be able to recognize the new chips and like you have a whole bunch of problems. But you could learn enough to where you could essentially like always fix your old graphics card, like AMD graphics card and upgrade it in different ways i mean you still be limited in in a lot of ways it's not like you're going to take a card that can only read gddr3 memory and upgrade it to gddr5 like that's like you yeah, you, you can't just remanufacture the like, car I, I know my idea was not you know physically possible but it was a cool idea <laughs> <laughs> it would be just cool if they could make the graphics card modular so you could just add in some more memory. It's never... Yeah. You know, but they don't want you to do that. They want you to go out and buy another $4,000 card because that's how much graphics cards cost now. Yeah, um, yeah. Now you should spend for a uh, 1050 Ti or like, I mean, yeah, no. So yeah, for a 1050 Ti, not, not even a current card, you should spend $3,000 because that's what it's worth, man. Just believe it. It's worth that you much. You can't even melt that thing down into the components and get your money back. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is it's so bad. All right, anyway, so my link this week is that for all those of us who just are so in love with snaps, 
Ubuntu and Mozilla have decided to make Firefox a snap de by default. And All this right. is just such a good idea. And I'm so uh, happy that they're doing same, this. I mean. <laughs> same. I've never been more happy in my life. I mean, as someone who personally um, thinks that you're an absolute degenerate if you're not using snaps for everything, um, like, come on, System D should be a snap. Um, everything should be a snap. <laughs> Don't say that shit when I'm trying to drink something, man. That's horrible. <laughs> like we we had the straight faces going on until until we said that, and then we just. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, In case you didn't uh, yeah. realize, that was all just sarcasm. Because <laughs> this is such a okay. So let's go through the good. Part, the the good part of this first it should t shouldn't take very long um <laughs> uh, theoretically this means less work for Ubuntu and Mozilla to distribute Firefox overall because they can just update it the snap and then push it out they don't have to recompile it every time and it's just putting in some minor work and pushing it out wait hold on what? So they, the reason why they did Chromium to, like this to begin with was because then they only had to maintain one package. When you, they had just the regular binary, they had to have a binary for 14.10, 16.10, uh, oh, you know, 20.10, gotcha. wh whatever. This way they just had one snap and it could go out to every single version of Ubuntu that they still have to support. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a good thing. It means that they don't, ha they don't have to spend all that time recompiling the binary to send out to every single different district you know version of ubuntu mm -hmm. but i think that's where the yeah. good part <laughs> that's the good part ends uh snap is horrible um and you you know the one thing firefox doesn't need is to be slower like <laughs> like <laughs> 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 Firefox doesn't need to be slower. It's already slow enough, thank you very much. It's not as fast as any Chromium-based browser. It's just slower. I mean, no, it's not the slowest web browser ever. Uh, you're probably not going to, you know, realize that it's slower at all because it's probably all you're going to use. But if you put it up compared to something else, it is appreciably slower. And now they're going to put it into a container, which means added compression time. It's going to mean... Uh, adding extra layers of complexity to starting it up and shutting it down and all this stuff, which means in the end, Firefox is going to be slower. Now, whether or not that's going to translate into web load times or not, I don't know. Uh, I, I doubt it. It should be marginal, but still, but it's not, it's not, it's not like it being in a container is going to make it faster. Right. Like, so. Where it's going to hurt you is when you open up Firefox for the first time. Like, so snaps have gotten better over the last couple of years. They are faster to start up than they used to be. But that's not, that, that that's like saying, uh, you know, a car got faster because you put in some dry gas or something. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know like, like, like it, maybe, yeah, you eked an extra quarter of a second out of your car or whatever to go zero to 60, but it, it's not fast it's still a prius okay mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know it's not gonna go very fast at all it was a horrible metaphor i know and i'm not a car guy but <laughs> it's just Same. it's just a, you know it's gonna be so slow to start up. and it, it, like joplin right now is, is a note-taking app and it's a good note-taking app and it has mobile applications and stuff like that it's open source uh you know it has a lot of cool functionality but it's a snap and it is slower than hell on the desktop. Now, you can download it from the AUR, but the AUR package has been broken for over a year. At least for me. I haven't been able to download it from the AUR and get to work in over a year. It just doesn't work. The snap works fine. But it takes... The first time you load it up, it takes at least a minute to show it up on your screen. It's like... Mm -hmm. you, like it's, it reminds me of the, the internet back in the days where... You know, you'll see an image and it just kind of like loads line by line. <laughs> like it reminds me of that. Like it's, this should not be that slow. And that's because it's a snap. The The regular, you know, binary or whatever wasn't that slow. Um, so it's just, 
I mean, I have my other reasons to hate snaps, like putting shit in my home directory. I don't want that. I was that. about to say, like, I'm like, <laughs> this, the actual, like, the problem with it going to snap is not necessarily really a problem with it going to snap, really. It's the problem with snap itself. Snap is the arrogant person that, like, the, 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 um, not good friend, but that friend that you pick up for a little bit of time, but then you invite him over for the first time and he comes over and he's a fucking slob and he like puts beer all over your place. He like spills drinks. He dirties up the bathroom, puts the kitchen. Cheetos dust on your keyboard. <laughs> yeah. And then falls asleep on your couch and then you have to like force him to leave your place three days later. Like that is snap. You install one snap package. You're going to spend three days cleaning up after snap on your system. And, and like, it's not. Okay. So it used to be just that folder in the home directory that pissed me off but if you've installed snap like i don't know if it used to do this and i just never noticed or if i just now notice because i'm getting more into to linux but if you do an like an lsblk after you've done a snap snap creates like loopback devices in like partitions on your system and they're there forever <laughs> like you can't get rid of these things and most people not gonna care me, who has a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, like OCD about him, <laughs> like I want to keep my system as, a, as clean as possible. I absolutely despise that because it makes it harder to find my hard drives because like I have like nine hard drives hooked up to my computer, but I also have like 12 uh, loopback devices that show up as partitions uh, being listed all at the same time. And like, they're not in order. It's just the, the mm-hmm. dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, and it just, it just pisses it's me off. It's annoying. Yeah. Like, like this... <laughs> Flatpak doesn't do this, okay? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like I have my own problems with Flatpak, but Flatpak doesn't do this. Mm-hmm. Why does... I mean, it's just so, so, it, so stupid. It, 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 it's really just the thing of there are... Really, I mean, if Snaps were the only game in town, it... Uh, it it probably wouldn't be that we wouldn't complain as much, but just because there are um, more friendlier alternatives, like I mean, dude, just go to app images. Like, geez, it's they're they're so nice, or, so you, nice. Make Snap better. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, that would be great. Here's an here's an, a crazy idea: make Snap open source so that the community can help you fix it. Because obviously, mm-hmm. you can't do it. You know. <laughs> I mean, Good point there. I mean, seriously. What? Uh, look, Linux would not be where Linux is today without Canonical. We can all admit that. Okay, there'd be so much. I mean, we'd still be twenty years ago if we hadn't had Canonical and Canonical's money, you know, enabling us to make Linux on the desktop better. Okay, mm-hmm. Ubuntu changed Linux forever, and it just did. Whether you like Ubuntu or not. Okay, mm-hmm. it lit a fire under Red Hat's ass, and they started developing and paying more attention to things like Fedora and CentOS and all this stuff that you know has contributed to underlying things that make Linux better. And you know, GNOME, you know, for all the shit we give it, you know, has moved mm-hmm. things forward and, and taken things away, and then moved things forward again, and mm-hmm. <laughs> we just keep going back and forth. But uh, you, Cano- canonical for all that can still be a pain in the ass and do bad things because I- snap sucks it's it's not a good system it's there's so many things that are just wrong with it uh from the fact that it will update your apps automatically without telling you to adding directories to places where you don't want them and you can't move them and this and and then only fixing it on Ubuntu. Like if you install Ubuntu and have Snap pre-installed by default, you don't get the Snap folder. It's not there. Uh, it's hidden or something. I don't even know, but it's not there. But you install install Snaps on Arch, you get it. Uh, to Ooh. creating those stupid loopback devices, which is, is is dumb and infuriating, and all sorts of adjectives that I just don't want to talk about right now. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> like there's just so many problems. Like the idea itself is good. Like a universal package manager that works across distributions that's containerized so that, you know, it's a, you know, uh, you know, secure and all this stuff. Grand idea. Let's have some more good ideas like that, but it's a very, very poor implementation. And, uh, I will always come back to the fact that I just don't like snaps because of those problems. And, and on top of that, like, let's, let's just say all those things are, 
nitpicky, and they are. Mm-hmm. Snaps are sn- steps. Snaps are slow. Like, like yeah. A- after all of that, they're not even. They don't even perform well. Like, come on. Yeah. Compared to an app image, you're just going to have a faster package on an app image yeah. than you will on a snap. Like, or or on flat pack. Flat pack is is isn't slow, or it's not. I mean, it's slower than like a, a native binary, but it's not snap slow. Um, mm-hmm. Here's an here's my solution for all of it. Get rid of snaps. Get rid of app images. Get rid of flat packs. Give everybody the you are. <laughs> there we go. I mean, I've solved Linux. Uh, Job done. <laughs> well, I mean, Debian's ripping off the you are so. Yeah, and we'll, I, we'll see if that we'll see if that takes off. I don't think it will. Um, well, here here's the reason why I I don't think it'll take off, but I've. Here's the reason why I feel like it has the best chance to is because of Debian's user base. They have the user base to at least have the potential to start off a an, a successful AUR competitor. Um, do I think it'll ever get to the point of the AUR? Probably not. I don't feel like most people are building. After my experience and from what I'm hearing from other people who have recently tried out Debian, I highly doubt that they're going to gain a lot of people from the Arch community that will help them make their packages a, as available over there. Out of all of the Linux distributions out there, the Debian community is the one that is the one that doesn't like change the most. Mm-hmm. And getting them to change and adopt a new system like the AUR, uh, the Debian AUR, would be hard, mm-hmm. like the hardest thing ever. Like they've talked many times about ditching System D, and the outrage that that community, th- you know, just I mean, I, like I don't care. I mean, I mean, keep System D. I think that's probably the best idea. But just de- that that change is just completely infuriates every member of that community, unless. Uh, so much so that the small portion of the community that wanted to switch to run it and open RC created Devon. <laughs> you know, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, he, here's the thing: like the, the the Debian community is so resistant to change, they will not change how they distribute ISOs, knowing that it's bad. Okay, let's talk like, about the ISO thing. Mm-hmm. So, I I did that long term <laughs> review, and uh, I had several comments that basically boiled down to: Are you a fucking idiot? Why can't you find the ISO? It's right there. It's on the front page. Like, no, that's the wrong ISO because I require non-free binaries uh, to, in order to, you know, actually, like, do things like connect to the fucking internet. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just, like, this isn't a printer problem, okay? Like, if your distribution doesn't work with my printer, that's usually a me problem. Like, that's mm-hmm. fine. It's a fucking printer. I don't care. And, yeah, and I can go without a printer. Like, it's okay. <laughs> right. I, I can fire up a Windows VM or a Linux Mint VM or something like that and print from there. Whatever. Mm-hmm. It's a printer. Wi-Fi is essential. It's like the steering wheel of your car, okay? You can't have a car without a steering wheel, okay? Or, you know, tires or an engine or something. It's literally essential these days. I mean, you can do things without the internet, sure, uh, but eventually you're going to get bored doing those things and move on to reading a book or something. You know, (laughs) the internet is very essential. So those people who said you're a dumbass and can't find the ISO, that's not the right ISO. So... I went back, and I looked for the non for ISO, and I found it without Googling it. I found that ISO. It is So if you go to the, the Debian website, they have those two columns of links. And at the bottom of them, they have two links. Both of them are entitled the same thing. They say more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, yep. which one you want to click on, I don't know. Uh, but eventually, you click on both of them, and you f- when you find the right one, you go to an, uh, a page that has some more information on it. Then you click on another link, and then another link, and then at the bottom of that page, four pages in, in the smallest text humanly possible, surrounded by a mm-hmm. box, it says some systems require non-free binaries or something to the, that line. And then mm-hmm. there's a link to the non-free ISO. That's where mm-hmm. it's at. But that's not the end of the story <laughs> because there's yep. still three more pages that you have to get to before you actually get to the binary. And you have to know 
not only do you need AMD 64, but you also need to know whether or not you want the live ISO or the 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 net install. Mm. You have to, and you have to you have to have the knowledge to know that the BT dash D D D or D whatever all of those you have to be able to know that those are just ignore folders and you just click on the ISO DVD like oh my god it's man so, uh, and i i've gotten to the point where i'm never going to review debian again like I, like i don't care that video did really well it got like 5000 views like it did really well but i'm not going to review a debian install again simply because there are so many people in that comment section that were so belligerent about the ISO situation because I did spend a good portion of that video bitching about the ISOs and I think I'm I think I'm in the right bitching about the ISOs because that is not yeah. a good experience now most people just say well google it well <laughs> that's not a solution that's a workaround okay <laughs> and and the link on that you're going to get from google is a link to two pages up so you still have to go down, get to the folders, then you have to know to ignore all of those different weird ISOs, click on ISO dash D. I mean, you still need to know, do I want CD or DVD? I mean, they'll both probably still work, but you probably want to go with a DVD. Like, come on, man, just give me, and when you go to the actual link that's going to have the ISO, it's a full page of text going through like why you might need the non-free mm -hmm. firmware. And then you get to the very bottom there's still all of the like before you get to the md md5 checksum and stuff and the actual actual iso there's more subdirectory links and shit mm -hmm. like that and then at the very i mean the very bottom of that page is the iso like <sighs> and that's not the only non-free ISO, iso that's the only ones you can find they have <laughs> 400 other ones like they, they maintain something like 300 different isos and that's not even that's like a low ball estimate because they have versions of the ISO for both stable and non-stable. They have ISOs for non-free and free and every combination thereof. And then they have ISOs for every single desktop available that they offer. Uh, net install. And then they have ISOs for every single one of those desktops with a live environment. And good luck finding those. You can't find those on their website. You just can't. You have to Google for those. And I think I've never found them again. I saw them. They exist, but I've never seen them again. It's like a, 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 a white elephant, you know, <laughs> you're never going to see it again, mm -hmm. but they do exist. You know, it's, we, we got to get out of this. We can't, we can't, <laughs> like, I am so sick and tired of, I, I, Debian is a community edition, a community supported and community developed thing. It is. It's not supported by a, uh, a a corporate a single corporation. It has corporation corporate backers, but it's not controlled by like Red Hat or whatever. The community, if they really cared about Debian, would somebody out there would just say, "You want to? I'm going to redo your website. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it for free." You know, it's going to be. It would be the biggest gift somebody could give to Debian. Now, uh, I don't think that anybody would actually go through doing it because the the Debian people that are really into Debian think that the hardness the the difficulty of finding an ISO is a good thing because it keeps new users away mm -hmm. and which is insane to me because I've been saying this for a long time I know Debian is not meant for new users but it's a perfect distro for new users because as long as you don't have new hardware and as long as you can get your hands on that ISO and get stuff installed you should have an experience like, no, it wasn't my experience, but you should have an experience that just, as long as everything works when you get it installed, it's going to stay that way forever. So it's perfect, especially for someone who just wants to get away, get one thing installed, go about their business and never have to worry about a thing again. That's Debian should be perfect for that individual. Agreed. This idea that some Linux communities have gotten into that they need to make things so hard that it scares away new users simply because it, they don't want to support them or they think it will dilute the user base or some other completely an uh, complete and utter nonsense is just the stupidest thing because it, it happened with arts the, the reason why arts people got so grumpy and and 
fickle and stuff is because they didn't want new users to have uh suckless software is still exactly this way it says literally right on the suckless website we're not for new users and if you have questions don't fucking ask questions because mm-hmm. we will murder you in your sleep or some shit it doesn't actually say that but it, it's the the intent you know yeah. and there's a lot of they, that they the- clearly don't ever want to support or help a new user which I, it is why suckless software is elitist like it is it, and it fosters a community of people that are very much like uh, we're better than you now when you talk to a lot of people who use dwm they're like no i just use it because it's amazing like that's i mean that's that's really just it DWM is, uh, is a great window manager it's, it's fantastic mm-hmm. it's written in a language that you can understand and read it's not like haskell that's going to kill you in your sleep you know mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, simple it's yeah. it's like, elegant i used ha- like, i i went into xmonad the other the other day for like five minutes I keep it installed just for the reason why, because Xmonad is very attractive, right? It has a lot of really cool features. I keep it installed so that I go use it and remind myself why I don't use Haskell in Xmonad. <laughs> <laughs> so, the the whole idea of scaring away new users is just the stupidest, uh, just the stupidest thing ever. All right. Anyways, uh, <laughs> fifty minutes in, Bruce. <laughs> fifty minutes in, hey. <laughs> we are finally. <laughs> Finally making it to the main topic. Oh, good lord! Uh, believe it or not, not a record. <laughs> no, no, not a record. Last week it was fifty-eight minutes, I believe, that before we got to the, mm-hmm. the main topic, and uh, the week before that, or the, sometime before that, we were so far deep into the the bullshit that uh, we didn't even do the main topic at all. <laughs> so, all right. So, if, um, let's go ahead and move on to the main topic, which. Uh, I pared down the original idea from what Tyler had it to just a simple thing, duplication of effort. And I think this mm-hmm. is basically the, the, the spirit of what you're trying to say, Tyler. So why don't you tell us Very much so. what we're going to be talking about? Um, well, the, uh, the, the thing when it comes to developing uh, for Linux that I feel like a lot of the times gets overlooked is a valid reason to actually develop and fork or create new software to challenge or to tackle a problem. Um, I, I don't know if you would agree with this, but the ability to fork and create new software is integral and very important to Linux. However, the amount of which it's used is too much because inside of the Linux space, we have a lot of separate applications and separate solutions to fixing a problem for non-valid reasons. Example, Glimpse, because GIMP is somehow like, I, I will never understand that at all because that literally, like if, if you have, if you get offended by GIMP, that just means you don't know what anacronyms are. And if you also are the type of person that you can get offended, that an anacronym can be used as another word that is offensive. Like, it, it, it came buddy. from a movie, okay? The reason why they used that anacronym it, it, or whatever is because it came from a movie. They wanted it to... It came from... Um, uh, I can't even remember the movie. It's it's a big famous movie. My brain's not working, but it's a mo- it came from a movie, okay. And it's been around for thirty years, okay. It's Oof. been around for so long. It, 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 I understand we're in, in the age of being offended about everything. It's just mm-hmm. now the in thing to do to be offended by stupid shit, but. It, you have to look at the intent behind the things that you're being offended by. If somebody's meant to, if somebody's doing something to offend you, then you can be offended. Go ahead. I don't care. Not gonna offend me. It it takes so much to offend me. I don't give a damn. Uh, a lot of people trying to be offensive are to me funny. Like I don't, <laughs> like it's really hard to offend me. But there, there's no argument out there whatsoever. There's none. That would say that the people who were behind the GNU image manipulation program were being offensive when they came up with their 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 name. There, there's just no argument you can that can be made that says that's true because there weren't. They were 
Yeah. They literally called it the GNU Image Manipulation Program and realized that, holy shit, that's a horrible name because it takes 12 minutes to say. We need mm-hmm. to pare this down a bit. And they came up with GIMP. Mm-hmm. And they realized, oh, this, you know, that's kind of cool. It came from a movie. Uh, mm-hmm. So people could actually already know how to say it. Yeah. They don't have to do the weird, you know, thing that because all Linux names are like this, where they're very accurate. Pulp, they're like extremely yeah, accurate. Pulp Fiction. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, so that was the movie. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> biggest movie of all time. You know, <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. one that everybody knows. Matt can't remember the name. It's okay. Um, but anyways, yeah. So it's dumb. And so just to go back to the original point, uh, not to get too d- deep into the gums, but you're absolutely right. So, kind of. People fork things for stupid reasons. The ability to fork is, you're right, integral to FOSS soft, you know, open source software. Mm-hmm. But people sometimes, it's not all the time, sometimes fork projects for stupid reasons. Um, and Glimpse, Glimpse is probably the, the best example of this, but there are... Um, uh, Linux Mint is another one. I I, I, I was back to Linux. Uh, like, I, 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 Talk about upsetting some people in the chat. You know, there's one Linux Mint user in the chat right now. He's just like, <laughs> he's dying. Like, like Linux Mint forked the fork of a fork. Okay, there's just too many forks mm-hmm. in that equation. They should have just forked the original. Okay, but uh, they forked Ubuntu because they didn't like what Ubuntu was doing, but what they could have done was just fork Debian to begin with, and they would have bypassed everything that you know Ubuntu you know had had you know was causing problems for them. Now uh, they would have had to put a lot more effort into getting Debian up to work, but they chose to do that work anyways with LMD. Like they chose to do the work. Uh, why they didn't just do it from the beginning? I don't know. It doesn't make a sense to me, and that's one of the forks that just doesn't make sense to me. Another one. And where we kind of get into the whole fork thing is Audacity. Like after mm-hmm. Audacity came, you know, had the the Russian snafu, um, as, as we call it. <laughs> Sounds mm-hmm. like a, a weird dance. But, you know, there was like f- five or six different Audacity forks that um, proclaimed to be the, the, the next Audacity. And they all had these grand plans and uh, were security conscious and privacy focused or whatever. Uh, and uh, really all they ended up doing was fighting amongst themselves and stuff. <laughs> to yeah. the point where we still don't have a really great audacity fork. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, the, the the forking system... We just have ones that are, are OG audacity right before yeah. all that shit went down. Yeah. That's really all we have. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I don't think that's going to change because those types of distros or um, software forks will never end. Um I mean, for one, like, I mean, it was perfect that you used Audacity because, I mean, there, there's telemetry now, like, in it, like, in the current, if you get the latest, like, update of Audacity, mm-hmm. which I still think a lot of distros are not pulling for the latest, but either way, it's actually got telemetry baked in it, which, like, look, I, I don't think forking it is a bad idea, but forking it and just saying we have we have Audacity with no telemetry it, th- that that's one thing, but saying that you're a whole different separate piece of software and something else where all that you're going to be doing is making sure that it just doesn't break. Like you're, you're not, you're not really a new piece of software. You're not really something new. You're just a backup of an old software. That's it. Literally. I forked audacity. Okay. When there's all stuff that I like, like I'm, I'm forking audacity. I'm not going to do anything with it. Because uh, I don't know any of the code, but I just wanted to make sure that if this company decided to make it, you know, private or, you know, uh, proprietary or payware or whatever, I wanted to have a copy of Audacity that I could build on my own to continue to use. Um, and I think if you go back, if you go look at the original Audacity thing, like 2,000 people <laughs> for Audacity within mm-hmm. like a, a week or something, it was insane. Uh, so... The, the thing with that is that you had just regular developers forking stuff, and they'd have no... Uh, a project of that size, if it's going to be forked properly, has to have a team of developers behind it, or a company mm-hmm. behind it. And that's where forking is actually a good idea. Uh, now, I don't want to say that, you know, just a random developer can't fork stuff, but... Mm-hmm. 
well, the bigger the project is, the harder it is to actually fork something and do it. That's what why Glimpse failed. I mean, outside of the fact that it was a stupid reason to fork something, they eventually came up with other good, re you know, things to do, like the, beyond the name. You know, they had some yeah. good ideas. Um, Changing the UI is one that's good. No, they've got a good objective there. But yeah, like, I mean, that even though it's not necessarily a massive problem per se, it's not like it's going to tear down Linux or something. It's still annoying. But I think it's something that, I mean, do, do you think we'll ever not have the issue of duplication of effort in Linux? No, because we're never going to all agree on everything. We're we're never ever 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 going to all agree on what package manager is the best. Okay, mm -hmm. you and I think that Pac-Man and the AUR, they're the shit. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. We're we're always going to come back to it eventually. I mean, when I leave Arch or an Arch based distro, I miss the AUR and Pac-Man. And I, there are a lot of people out there like that. There are people who love Apt. I mean, just can't get enough of Apt and AppGet. You know, there are people who think that compiling your own stuff and using Gentoo is the way to go. You know, mm -hmm. there are people who highly enjoy XBPS from Void. You know, that's the reason why we have 45,000 different package managers. Mm -hmm. Not sure that was an overestimation or not. You yeah, know? I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. You know, so that's the reason why. And so no, that's not ever going to go away. And uh, Terminal for Life said something last time we talked about the uh, duplication of effort. Um, he, he was talking about, like, you can't force developers to not do things that they want to do. So if they have a, a qualm mm -hmm. with some piece of software, they're fully in their right to go through and develop whatever they want. And he's absolutely right. Right? There's mm -hmm. We can't say, well, you can't go through and do this because... You know, we already have that. Like, it's, like as much as I want to shake the Linux Mint developers for <laughs> you know, always going through, like, going through and making another uh, uh, bulk rename tool, like, we mm -hmm. don't need that. Like, that was time that you didn't need to do. But that was probably just one developer. It was probably just one guy, you know, uh, sitting at his MacBook, probably, because he's probably not using mm -hmm. Linux. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, you know, and he just, that's what he wanted to make. You know, and that's and, just what he wanted to make. And we can't tell him, you know, no, don't do that. And frankly, mm -hmm. I don't think we would want to tell him, no, don't do that. I mean, I do tell him, no, don't do that, do something else. But it, it, the spirit of Linux will, will, will tell us that, you know, we need that kind of freedom for people to do just whatever they want. And yeah, it leads mm -hmm. to a fractured ecosystem. Yeah, it leads to 9 million package managers yeah it leads to you know, you know stupid forks of stupid projects for stupid reasons uh but at the end of the day that's kind of what makes Linux great and there's no way to curtail the bad stuff without also getting rid of the good no yeah. nope so completely agree yeah well that was very eloquent man you should definitely record that or something <laughs> <laughs> Well, lucky me. <laughs> yes. Hopefully we don't lose this recording. That'd be, that'd be bad. That'd be that was, bad. That was really good. Um, so it was just one, one of the things. The the Linux Mint video that I originally did, the one that I called Linux Mint Useless, has gone down mm -hmm. in Linux infamy. <laughs> because it, like I see, I see that, like I have a reputation now as a Mint hater. Like just because of that video, like it doesn't matter that I've come, I I've made a few other Linux Mint videos after that, saying you want know, Linux Mint is fine. Cinnamon actually makes a ton of sense, you know, for mm -hmm. new users. Uh, it doesn't matter that I've said any of that. that original video where I said Linux Mint was useless. That has followed me everywhere. <laughs> That's so funny, you know. It's like. <laughs> In 2031, when you're using Linux Mint for some reason, somebody will still pop in and be like, "Like, I thought you said you hated this. What's going on?" You're like, dude, shit changes, man. Like, come on. Yeah, my luck is is Tyler's going to say that our next challenge is going to be using Linux Mint as our daily driver for a month. <laughs> oh no, no. Did you, Actually, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. Did because, you come up with uh, an idea? Yeah. What are we yeah. Doing? So what are we doing? Oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> Should I be scared? <laughs> uh, maybe not. So uh, for, for this question, I, I do have to ask: Do you have an extra machine that you don't have to use all the time? Like a laptop. 
laptop or desktop, something that you don't have to necessarily use at all that you could use for a separate task. Yeah, I have a couple laptops that I could do something on. All right. Uh, so I think our next challenge is going to be setting up local GitHub repositories for ourselves where we can back up stuff locally to a GitHub repository, deploy it to any other machine in the house. And then we do all of our dot file like pushes and everything from that actual repository. Up. So we push up to a local repository and then up By and we have a local backup. GitHub, you mean GitLab. Yes, GitLab. Sorry, that's that's actually what I meant. Uh, I was gonna say Git, GitHub's not actually open source. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm looking at that laptop behind me. Like, um, okay, we're gonna give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about that, uh, uh, like offline, because I want some you know more details. But okay. Um, that's gonna be. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure people here would love to hear it. Uh. I mean, if we have time for it, but... Um, if we're going to take uh, some questions, we probably should... We'll, oh, yeah, that's we'll, right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about... It's not going to be like next week, so we we'll, we have some time yeah. so I can get some more details. Uh, and that, that'll be very interesting, because I've never even... I don't even have a GitLab account. Um, uh, you all need one. Um, okay. I mean, you, you, you will... You will want one, uh, and you'll and you'll need one. But to actually set it up on your laptop, like to actually get a, a repository set up, uh, you and installed, you won't need it. Um, you can also use like Docker and stuff like that. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to get that set up because Docker makes it really easy. Can it run from a Raspberry Pi? Uh, I mean, you should be able to do it from there. Yeah, no problem. This might be the reason for me to get a Raspberry Pi and do a, do a Raspberry Pi build. That would be. I'm thinking I'm, that that could be a good reason to um, finally pop down the money for a Raspberry Pi. Because I need I I want to do my actual like GitLab repository on a separate device because I, I have my Gigabyte Brick set up as my next cloud um, server, um, but I'll probably um, just take my Raspberry Pi. I've got a three B plus, and that's what I'll set up as my GitHub repository. Or I keep saying GitHub GitLab repository. Um, oh, all right. That's gonna that should be very fun. I, I'm gonna I'm I will get on the horn and buy myself Raspberry Pi, and uh, learn SSH and all this stuff. <laughs> this should be a very <laughs> interesting challenge. Okay, um, it'll be interesting to see how we show that off. You know what I mean? Um, I mean we'll probably just both have to like uh well. Showing it off probably won't be too hard because as soon as you set it up, you'll you you will have the ability to have like a web like a web interface so you can type in the um, local IP address. Um, I mean, you could also get a domain and and do some. You you could make it much more advanced, have it to where it's available anywhere online, but then you have to self-host it. That means requiring talking to your IP, and it's that gets much more complex. But at your uh, on your own local internet, you can type in the IP address of that device uh, in the browser and give it the specific port, and you'll get a web interface just like you were going to GitLab.com. And so you could you know browse your own repository just like you would on the internet. Um, Okay. And so we can show off like what, like, you know, now we've got it local here. This is my, this, this is how I access it and then SSH into it and show how you've got it set up with Docker and stuff like that. We um, got to pause right now because old tech books in the, in the chat, man. And then I'm going to say pause, pause a minute for, uh, uh, just freak out a little bit. <laughs> OTBs in the, in, the, in the chat, y'all. All right. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. All right. Okay. So if, um, any, we had some questions earlier. If you have any questions, give us a mention because we're going to do about uh, five minutes of, of questions here. So, um, so if you if, if we can, you know, get five minutes worth of questions, uh, give us some questions in the chat. For, so, uh, Phoenix Python has asked, "What are your guys' favorite theme slash color schemes?" Uh, first of I, all, I, I, rhymes. I'm 99 percent sure I, c I can guess this for both of us. Um, well, for you, I know Grovebox holds a special place That's in your so heart. Good. I'd but have to choose between Dracula. Yeah, gr between Grubbox and Dracula, so good. Uh, but man, I can't choose one uh, because I also like Material Ocean is really good. Um, uh, you know, 
arc, the arc theme, there's just like the general blue arc theme. Not a horrible, it's not my favorite, but it's really good. Like it, it's, it's overused, so I don't use it anymore, but it's not bad. Nord also really good, but again, overused. Um, uh, the, really, it'd be easier to name the color schemes that I don't like. Like, I don't like Solarized. Like, I just can't stand Solarized. Dracula's the best. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I, gotta stand Tyler's up Tyler's not going to be able to see this, but we can go through and see my Dracula color scheme. Yes, that's the Dracula color scheme that I have right now, and it's so good. Uh, it looks so good. Oh, so, so good. Um, so switching away from this will be a, a hard, but um, eventually I will do it. Um, so. You know, yeah. um, Crazy Chicken asked, I'm wondering when Zany will unironically try to use Plan 9, even though he probably won't be able to record videos on it. Um, I won't unironically try Plan 9 because I couldn't do anything that I want would want to do on the daily. I couldn't install a, a, a modern web browser. I could, I mean, if I wanted to edit text, I mean, Plan 9, go to it, brother. Uh, if I wanted to, like, I don't even know. I, I highly doubt I could get a Gemini browser running in Plan 9. I mean, there's so many problems with that. So no, that will that that just won't happen. Um, I'll stick to using stuff like, at least even an open BSD man. I could get Chromium installed. I could get Firefox installed. I can get any modern, not any modern browser, but I can get just about any. I want to see some other YouTuber do Plan Nine before I ever even uh, consider trying it. And I want to. I don't want to see them just install it. I want to see them use it. Like the hey, Plan Nine is my daily driver. So, and I want that to be one of these people in the chat who actually wants to uh, get us to do Plan Nine. I want them to do it first. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. like, you first. Like you want to jump off the bridge? Fine, I'll, I will follow you, but I'm not going first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like this. It's the it's this the the Linux from scratch guys, LF, LFS guys, like the same thing. Uh, I did challenge people to find YouTubers to actually run LFS like as their daily driver, and I actually did get some like responses. Like there are apparently some YouTubers out there that do run LFS like as a their daily driver, but um, hmm. those people. I know someone in my Discord installed. Um, can't remember who it was, but they installed. Um, LFS set it up and everything and used it for a while. I don't know if they're still on it or not. Um, uh, oh, good lord. Lewis asked, Patreon goal for switching to Plan 9 for one week? How high? Um, look, I won't set a goal or anything, but if, uh, and, and I mean, I'll, I'll know the intention of this one person, but if one single person gives me $50 for a month, then I will I will live like that one person fifty dollars alone Man, for that one you're person. You're such a rank amateur. You you don't know how to set goals. If you're gonna set these kind of goals where you don't want to do the thing that you're setting a goal to do, you have to set it the bar so high. Dude, that, that, no one's gonna give me fifty bucks like <laughs> just one person oh, to see me yeah. in Plan Nine for a week. There's one person uh, out there that will probably give you fifty dollars, but that. Uh, Came out of my mouth, and as soon as it, as soon as it did, I'm like, "There's definitely gonna be one person There's who's gonna, gonna be a person. Like, like, I might do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 that's the reason why the Gen Two goal I set for three hundred and fifty dollars, because uh, it just feels so unrealistic for me to to get up there anytime soon. Like I can keep pushing into the future over and over mm -hmm. and over again. Like I'm not, probably never gonna get you know get up there. So. Uh, <laughs> and that's, well, that's, look, that's how you I set said it. So I mean it. One person, fifty dollars. Uh, yes, I'll I'll unironically run Plan Nine for a week. It'll be a terrible time. It'll be a lot of raging. I know for sure. But yeah, I'll do it. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> somebody's asking for your link, dude. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. I'm so sending it. I, I gotta. Uh, let's see. I gotta go to. Um, oh God. Patreon's so bad. Um, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, this is going to be, this is going to be bad. I mean, I will very much appreciate the $50, but 
Good look. There are multiple people like I have fifty dollars, so I'm willing to waste on this. Good <laughs> Lord, y'all. Come on, no. You're gonna end up like a thousand like a grand, you know? <laughs> gonna, you, know you, you have to figure out a way to live stream it. Okay? Because I wanna watch the pain I will. and suffering. Um, how about this? I, I will make the promise. I have a tripod here with a phone mount. I will charge up my phone and I will do a f live stream from my phone where you can see the entire computer and everything. And, um, as long as my phone's charged up, I can go for quite a f like couple hours or something pretty easy. <laughs> I'll have my blue mic plugged into it. So we'll do that. <laughs> Tyler's not going to get to a thousand subscribers, but he's going to have a, like, $150, $300 a month on Patreon for at least one month. <laughs> and I, I will go ahead and say this to just really dig my hole. Um, I, I'm, I'll, I'll have to have another device for sure. There's no way I'll be able to do the podcast and stuff from it. But um, I'll, I'll figure that out at a later time. But just to dig my hole deeper, every single person that does $50 a month, because I'm very appreciative of it, each each of those donations counts as a week in Plan Nine. Oh no no no! What's wrong with you, man? Don't 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 no no no. So what if, there you what go. If, uh, <laughs> I, I I I'm. I... <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Uh, I, I'm not getting in. I, no, this does not apply. By the way, no, just this this is not does not apply. To me, okay? you're like you're like you're like. Look, the link in the description that says the Linux cast, that's mine. Don't go there. Don't give me your money. I don't okay? want any. Of I your won't money. do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in chat's like, yes. I will install Gentoo on my machine. <laughs> if I get to my my Patreon goal, that's the that's the minute I will do it, and I will I will use Gentoo for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving any time. Like I, I, I will install it on bare metal, metal, even if I'll do it. But I'm not doing it until that point. I, I've said this. I'm sticking to my guns, and I'm not going to be the the Tyler shill. Well, you just give me fifty bucks. I'll go do it now. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? You're such an amateur. You, you could have said, give me a hundred and fifty bucks for a month, and I'll do it now. Like, you could have had so much more money. What is wrong? With you? <laughs> Look, man. Um. I say stuff, then regret it, but it ends up being fun. Um, I don't know about Plan 9. That Who knows? I might really like it. You but need to check I your email because it. apparently it's done. <laughs> no freaking way. Hold on. Let me see. Patreon would have given me a notification. Okay, I don't have... I literally just got it. I like it literally just popped on my phone. Pledged fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay. I, I, I told you, man. You just oh. Uh, <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've. Well, <laughs> plan nine. Here I go, man. That's almost as funny as that distribution that I reviewed yesterday that didn't have a display manager because it had Dude, <laughs> and Start X actually that, worked. Like, that that was so good. I cried laughing. I like I I knew when I saw that TTY, I knew what was going to happen. I I knew you were going to try Start X, and I was like, oh come on, man. What else? I mean, it was either that or try to install like Light DM or something like. <laughs> Like, yeah. It just made sense to start X. Funny. <laughs> well, it was just so funny because, like, in my head, I'm like, "Oh man, no, he's gonna try start X. It ain't gonna work, man." And you go start X, and then it loads up, and I start laughing, and then I hear you laughing, dude. Like that was so like, good. Uh, like I didn't okay because start X doesn't work when there when there's a display manager installed. Start X just doesn't work because in, the X and RCs, you know, has a different loop in it. Mm -hmm. So. I wasn't was not expecting it to work. Like, like there's I, I, in my head, I was like, there, there, I'm gonna try this, but I'm gonna look like a dumbass because, of course, it's not going to work. And then wait, I was like, wait, like, like it flashed there for a second, like it just like flashed on the screen mm -hmm. for just a second, and just saw the cursor. Like, wait, did that work? And then it popped up deep in. I was like, <laughs> I'm thinking, what the fuck? This is so 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 stupid. I like, I don't even. It's so weird. Uh, I mean, just. Like I, I've never seen a a, a dis, like a desktop environment based like distribution that didn't ship with a display manager. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it's so weird. I'm like Arch 
or Gen 2 or whatever, everybody uses Stardex for those things out of the box because they don't come with display managers out of the box. But this one... I, I have so many things to say about that distribution. I cannot believe... Like, I, I mean, I know you stated it throughout the video, which it, I just looked at chat and, I, and it just made me re uh, remember. Joshua, thank you very freaking much for that. Uh, <laughs> I'll put that money to good use uh, and we'll have some fun in playing night. But um, that distribution, bro, for, for, for one, like, I have so many things to say about Deepin. Like, it, it looks nice, but it's, it's Chinese based. And look, I don't have any problem with Chinese developers. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a really good underground FOSS movement in China, but the government is openly against it. And if you're a big project that has in international interaction, you better believe the Chinese government's doing oh, something there. No, Just they <laughs> they love FOSS. They, because they can put their stuff in it and spy on you. Exactly. They, they love FOSS, right? So. Um, <laughs> But also that distribution, when you loaded it up, man, there was nothing about it that's like you, if you put that on your computer and you were inside of the Deepin desktop, you would have no idea that you're not using Deepin. Yeah. I, I, like, the only thing that they changed was the grub menu. Like they, that was the only place that their name appeared was in the grub menu. So they, some, they figured out how to, they loaded up the grub editor and they changed the name there and literally Everything else was was Deepin. Now they did add in some applications, like PC Man FM doesn't come with Deepin, but mm -hmm. it was yeah. there, right? But it was it was just really, really, really weird. Uh, and the the thing is, it's not like I went and searched for oddest desktop, you know, or oddest distros. That was on the front page of DistroWatch as one of their mm -hmm. recently updated, you know, distros. Like yeah. apparently anybody and can get in. <laughs> <laughs> to me, what cra what cracked me up about the the most about that is I for one I love that series like that has to be a series that continues that's so good <laughs> and two it's it's a distribution of somebody who likes Deepin and who learned how to make a grub theme and then that's their well, like distribution the, like <laughs> what like they they made they made so they they changed the name and the and the grub theme. And they managed to make an ISO. Like, they have an ISO there. And they're part of an organization that has a ton of different desktop or distributions. Uh, they have, I mean, we make fun of Debian for their website. That website was just god awful. It was so <laughs> bad. And I, like, I, like, I don't want to make fun of them because, you know, it's probably, but the thing is, it, it sounds like they wanted to, like, they're part of an official Swedish Linux society or something. <laughs> uh, you know, so, I mean, good on them, but it was a, Really weird district. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on to the last, <laughs> not the last <laughs> thing. Now that we've, now that we made Tyler his money for the week, <laughs> I still, you should have asked for more. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm ashamed to know you. <laughs> you, just, you, got, you got, you got to become a bigger shill than me. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, <laughs> I'm too cheap. <laughs> I'll pay Matt fifty dollars to install and run Slackware for a week. Uh, I need more than fifty bucks there, man. I'm I, I'm not the yeah, I cheap. Mean, no, no. I am not the cheap man that that Tyler is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, he knows his price, and his price is firm. Okay, uh, it's, it's me just, on the other hand, I come cheap. All right, it's just, it's just high, man. Once you once you get to the to the level of four thousand subscribers, you know, you 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 you, you, you got to be elite, man. You you got you you know <laughs> you, you you can't sell your soul for less than. $75. <laughs> and by the way, that still wasn't my price. <laughs> I guess that, it's still way too long. I'm not doing that. All right. Anyways, uh, every week, holy crap, we're uh, <laughs> into the show. Uh -oh. This is going to be our longest episode ever. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, um, I will, tr uh, I, for, for the, um, the recording of this, Thing, I will try to figure out a way to get the chat on screen. Somebody asked um, the last time we did a live stream for the chat on screen screen for the edited podcast. I will try. Um, 
I don't know if I will succeed this time, but I'm working on it, okay? We'll figure that out next time. If I'm not a dumbass, I'll just switch to the freaking workspace that this is on and have OBS, OBS record it. That'd be the easiest way to do that for when we were actually, you know, asking for questions and stuff. So, uh, but I didn't do that this time because, again, dumbass. Um, <laughs> we'll get better at streaming as we go on. It's only the second time we've streamed a podcast. Mm-hmm. We'll get better. Anyways. And I think I think YouTube has done a better job now when you... When you have the stream up, it's easier to see the chat there. Okay, but... so in the next version of OBS, integrated chat streaming will be a thing. Like it's it be integrated into Ooh. OBS. Um, but we're not there yet. It was still in a release candidate the last time I checked. So uh, that's still a couple months away. Uh, but again, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so mm-hmm. every week we come up with things like apps of the week, picks of the week. We never know what to color call them. So Tyler, what is your pick of the week? My pick of the week here, and I hope he's in this live stream. He might not, but um, my pick is um, this fantastic uh, DWM. Uh, you could call it rice or fork, or it's really just it's really just someone's custom DWM setup. Um, I'm calling it TPM DWM R Y E S because we're all about abbreviations here, and so. TMP DWM RYES is quite frankly the best pro, uh, DWM setup you'll ever have. It's the most pretty DWM rice you've ever seen. Um, and you'll find it over at gitlab.com slash smoig uh, or S M E U E G because we never know how to say it slash DWM. And um, I wish we had a picture because the, he doesn't have an image on his GitLab, which is just sad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but we're just, we're, this, we're just gonna have DWM to imagine how pretty it is. I'm just, you know. <laughs> yes, uh, and if you do want to help him out here, uh, just j- just uh, download it, set it, or like uh, run uh, his. Good lord, install his version of DWM and take a picture of your screen, and then just shoot it over here on his GitLab. Be like, hey, put this in your README, man. Here you go, because <laughs> uh, it looks fantastic. I, I, I am not kidding. It looks amazing. It is a fantastic rice. If you're wanting to get into DWM and rice it and everything, but you 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 don't like the fact that it doesn't come with you know some good patches out of the gate and it's not very it's not very pretty right out of the box for you to customize it. Download this DWM rice right here. You're going to love it. The only thing that I will go ahead and give us a notice is make sure that you have material icons installed. Um, I don't know if that's part of his readme here, but just make sure you got the material icons. So, uh, well, your icons look right. Yeah. Um, there, you go. there are so many good DWM rices. I have four of them on my GitHub page. Um, mm-hmm. So you, um, I'm not competing with this one, but... There are so many. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're competing. You're competing, man. There's uh, one called Chad WM. That is, <laughs> it, 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 I know the name is hilarious, but it uses the one dark theme. Oh, my God. It's so good. And I installed it, but it has some of the weirdest fucking uh, key bindings just in the history of ever. And I wasn't going to go through and mess with him, but it, he, that guy did his own like DWM bar with like a script. Oh, it's mm-hmm. so good looking. Oh, man, it was good. Um, yeah, it's good. Anyways, uh, somebody said, uh, wait until somebody pays you $600 for Hannah Montana Linux. Uh, if somebody wants to pay me $600, I will use Hannah Montana Linux for a week. Uh, Uh, and then, and then my cheap ass over here, if any one person sends me a hundred dollars, I'll try out Hannah Montana Linux. (laughs) (laughs) You just don't, you're not doing it right, man. You're not doing it right. You you gotta, you gotta up your standards just a little bit. Uh, uh, Joshua said that uh, um, uh, Slackware, if Slackware is not worth, the, not as hard as Gentoo, so it shouldn't be like three hundred dollars. I can't actually find the comment. Something like that. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, 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 an, I'm an expensive bitch. Is what. <laughs> they say. All right. So uh, my pick of the week. We really do got to get wrap this up because it's supper time. Uh, <laughs> my so. I've been looking for a uh, like a streaming service where I could actually pay for a whole year, and um, you know, actually get a good discount. And Deezer ended up being the one that I chose that actually gave me a fairly good discount. I got a whole year for eighty nine bucks, and uh, I wanted a streaming service because I got sick of trying to maintain my own playlists, and uh, it's a you know a lazy man thing. But anyways, 
Um, I didn't think that Deezer was ever going to be a really good option for me because they didn't have a very good Linux client. They had a web, you know, like a web app or whatever, and you could just, you know, use it in a web page. But somebody went through and created an app image that has a, a Deezer, um, like application side of it and it's really mm-hmm. actually not bad uh it's still electron uh so yeah. well i mean it's it's it, it's just essentially the web app right it's basically what it is but it exists and it's separate from actually using it you know in the browser which always bothers me because my, my browser windows go all over the place and i don't want to lose it i just want to actually have an application that i can you know um you know use so uh dmix dmix d-e-m-i-x dash g-u-i is really good it's and it is an app image for every other distro, but because the AUR is awesome, you can get it from the AUR. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. a, a you know a, an app image. It's really good. It loads up really fast, um, and it's really good. You can actually change themes and uh, download songs, and it does everything that the web version does, and it's really good. Um, now, is it as good as the Spotify uh, client? No, but. I don't care because uh, I, I never use the Spotify client anyways. Now, if I could find a Deezer client for the terminal, I would cool. literally be so thankful for that because I would love to be able to do that. But as far as I know, that doesn't exist yet. Hopefully it does because Deezer is actually really good. Uh, the mobile app is just miles ahead better than Spotify is. So, uh, yeah, that is it for Picks of the Week. Uh, definitely give those a check out all the links for all this stuff the news the the pics uh, the contact information will be in the show notes below whether you're listening to audio or video they'll be there somewhere where you can find them fairly easily i always copy them over so they should work very well uh before i go i'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons uh i don't have someone paying me fifty dollars to, to <laughs> spend my nine but then that would be not enough money so <laughs> uh, before i go devon chris east coast web gen 2 is fun too marcus meglin sven jackson knife and tool joshua lee mr joshua lee money bags mitchell arch center merrick camp and j dog thanks everybody for watching We'll see you next time.